Hey everybody, we're in York, Pennsylvania at the Antique Truck Historical Society's annual convention. Let's go look at some trucks. There are some sharp rigs here. Even just a few I've seen already have been incredible. This one here, the Diamond Rio. It's an international metro. Kind of looks like a toaster. Never dreamed these would be so popular as they are now. But they're pretty cool design. Pretty comparable to the Divco milk trucks of its time. Here we got a row of Max. Super liners. B66, B61, Thermodyne engine. It's a really neat looking cab over. A friend of mine used to say, dang, that girl's uglier than a cab over Mac, and I guess that's where the saying came from. An old auto car have kind of a neat hood ornament on them. signals on top of the headlight bezels, auto car hubcaps. Not sure is this a wet kit. Oh nuts. That's for dumping sand underneath the wheels. I never seen anything like it. That's so Max and Sterling. And here's some diamond tea trucks. Here's our friends over at IH Gear. <laughs> Looks like the old White Line Fever truck. KB7. These bigger ones had the headlights mounted on the fenders rather than being in the fenders like the uh, smaller ones. No Emeryville International. Rockway dump truck. Oh wow. Walter Snowpipe. This is front wheel drive. No, oh, it isn't either. Oh, wow. 
This has little drive shafts with orbitals. That's amazing. I've never seen anything like this. This is classy. 1955 Mac LTH. 34. Oh, my favorite trans star. Such a good looking trans. Another diamond T. Beautiful trans star. Oh, and there's flatbed red. Design International Cab over oh, the Eagle on the front, too. Beautiful. This place. Oh, back there's a Smokey the Bandit track. This is cool. Error correct corrugated side trailer. The old wheeled landing gear. There's another one. We got the hood open. We can take a look at this thermodyne. Cab over white. These things really had a unique look to them. It's even for sale. It could be yours. Transtar 4300. I love those. Hopefully I'll get one one day. Little Transtar cab over. Nice little low boy on the back. And here's the Smokey and the Bandit truck. This is beautiful. We got a matching trailer.
And here's a Dodge Bighorn. It's my understanding they didn't make very many of these. That's a beautiful example though. This is cool. International R Series. The old school Alcoa wheels on it. Oh, those aren't either. They're wheel simulators. Chevy Titan. I think the GMC Astro would have been the uh, GMC version of this truck. There's another TV truck. This is a truck from BJ and the Bear. Or a clone of it. Nineteen seventy one Ford W nine hundred with an eight V seventy one Detroit ten speed. There goes flatbed red on a Jeep. Yeah, that, that was the local. I did the old pipes. Yeah. This is cool. Diamond T. That's beautiful. 1965 Diamond T. 291 diesel. Here's another Diamond Rio cab over. 1975 model. There's a Mormon. Dodge had this neat feature that the, uh, the fenders would swing out to get to the batteries, the engine. And power steering. It's a big old gas engine. They're used to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I try to drive everything I got. So that's the way to pick up. I drove it a couple thousand now last year. I didn't get it out to Ocean City here. We did that. And this one here, my brother runs around. I think it used to be a fire truck, so probably had a kind of small engine for what it is. It'll take the best part of 30 gallons to do a round trip from York to Smithsburg, Maryland. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. This here. We run to Carlisle, run to yeah. the local shows. Oh, yeah. 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 Before they were able to do around. Before they... This is kind of an interesting Diamond Rio. 1986 Giant Diamond Rio Model C1. Oh, that's interesting. That emblem's right. This has a Deutz diesel engine, air cooled. Keep down. There's a uh, fiberglass shroud in there to direct air into the engine for cooling. So yeah, that would be a Deutz air cooled diesel engine in there. Beautiful 9370 International. Oh, an Emeryville. That dump trailer. Here's a Hendrickson truck. Not only did they make suspension, they made trucks too. They used international cabs. They made their own front end sheet metal. Yeah, 
And another Hendrickson. Oh, this dump truck is beautiful. Everything low to the ground. Another international Emeryville. Yeah, but the new guys, that's after he retired, all the new guys. Yeah, I don't have anything back over here. Yeah, we go. Buick, the white, auto car cab over. I'm not sure, an auto car maybe? Here's a familiar truck we see at the Scout Nationals and uh, Harvester Homecoming. This right here is one of the early chain drive Max. This is where Max get the whole bulldog reputation. The British soldier says these were tough as a bulldog. They kind of look like it too. It's interesting hood. Had a chain drive rear axle. <laughs> And solid tires. You can see the brake drum there. The radiator was in the back. This was part of the uh, the Teamsters drove horses, and they didn't appreciate trucks coming along and putting them out of business. So they would spook their horses in front of trucks, so they'd kick through the radiators, and ruin them. So a lot of the companies start putting the radiators in the back to prevent that. Brockway Heavy Hawk, mm -hmm. Old Mac. Boy, that's just so beautiful. Got PTO winch on the back. So maybe this was a sort of roustabout truck of its day. Okay. 
bag. It's an old Sterling, 1944 Sterling. Another one of the chain drive Max. It says Cummins on it. I'm not sure if that would have been original or not. Well, these original steps. This must have been quite a restoration. Beautiful oil truck. It's another Mac. Oh, this thing's a monster. This is also an international cab. Companies used to buy international cabs for a lot of things from industrial equipment to building their own semis. Later Oshkosh did a lot of that. So this is a Ford F-350 uh, camper special and a lot of the automotive companies built pickup trucks had a camper special truck, International had it, Ford had it, Chevy, Dodge, all of them. But Ford did something a little different. It's normally it was just a sway bar package, heavier springs, maybe a bigger engine. But Ford did things a little differently. This is a unique bed to the camper special package, also a unique wheelbase. This rear axle sets back further. I don't remember what exactly the measurement was. But it sets back further, but the bed is the same length overall. And if you notice this weird hump on the passenger side, this is to keep the spare tire out of the bed. There's a panel on the passenger side so that you can put the spare tire sitting on the side and out of the way. So you got room for your camper. You can kind of see it peeking down there in the bottom. It's a beautiful restoration. I don't Another Dodge Bighorn. That's beautiful. Old school trailer. This would have been the Mac that the uh, movie Cars based their Mac truck to pull the race car off of. International KB series. And what Dodge Row wouldn't be complete about without a uh, Little Red Express. A special package you could order back in 1979. In the stacks. 
Here's an interesting thing. Here we've got an early international cab over. I've heard these called high binders. I don't know if that's proper terminology or not. They certainly are high. Cat motor of some sort. This person even brought some trackers along. I see Ferguson 98 diesel and an Oliver 2255, the Cat 3208. V12 Detroit, V1271. Two superchargers. They're on top. B seventy five Mac, the sleeper. Oh, okay. Um, so if you come it's an old international Budweiser truck. Oh, this is cool. They might buy meal. I used to see these things everywhere. We'll be back by then. All right. We'll see you, Ray. All right, I'll try to be sitting there. Yep. Right. See you right now, Wes. Yeah. Any iron like this. back on his own truck. He did. Yeah. 
This is cool. I believe this was a fiberglass bed. It was GMC Chevrolet's first attempt at a uh, fleet side bed. I think they were called cameos. Maybe the Chevys were called cameos. This one says Suburban on it. It had a regular step side bed on the inside. These fiberglass quarter panels folded to them. Beautiful track. I don't know if you've watched my uh, any of my Keystone videos from the Keystone Museum, but I believe these, this one's right here anyways, is from the museum. Studebaker Hawk. We got a John Deere crawler back here. John Deere 40. I believe this had the Lindemann undercarriage on it. Convert it from a regular tractor to a dozer. It's got some really wide pads on it. Swampers. Another nicely done Mac. E61 with the Thermodyne diesel. Beautiful truck. <coughs> <laughs> and half the people were dying. Here's an International 9370. Now this would have been the last year and a half with IH production before it became Navistar. And if you notice, there's a couple features that changed when it became Navistar. This hood ornament changed. It no longer had the IH on it, it just had uh, two rectangles on it. And this blue eagle emblem, I believe, became red or orange after that. William Smack. And then when Navistar took over, the hood arm had changed. Somebody's kind of got the outline of an IH on that one. Ford L9000. We got hit and miss engine. You gotta go check this out. It's actually a common Here's something y'all see every day. Might have been an RV at one time and then a bus. And here's a after Navistar. The International became Navistar. 9370. See the Eagle emblems now orange. 
hood ornaments changed. Not much else changed besides the logos and stuff. Diamond Rio. Which motor does your Mormon have? AB92. Yeah. You didn't rub it up the 6,000 RPMs coming in your engine? No, you know. That went directly. Let's do the Baker pickup. When you start losing, when you start losing, does it? Two points full of drive. This is interesting. Early four wheel drive. I thought they are the ones going I thought you had a Daniel. Mechanical dump bed. springs. Diamond T, deuce and a half. No cracker box GMC. I think this one's been yeah. carpetized. Yeah. A little modernization on this one. We got an International Low Star 1700. Little trans star. Got some parts vendors and stuff out here too. T shirt vendor. Had to get out of the sun for a little while. Came in here to see the indoor displays.
Jeep cab over, pick up, four wheel drive, the FC series. Beautiful pickups. Baker Diesel. Oh, it's got a Detroit on it. 453 maybe? International 4300. Chevrolet with a Napco four wheel drive. International C Series. Why, that's beautiful. I think this would have been called the bonus load bed. It was like nine and a half feet instead of your standard eight foot. Divco milk truck. Here's something interesting. It says McDonald on the front of the grill. Kind of looks like it stoops down and drops to the ground for loading and unloading. Kind of looks like a friction yeah. drive. But... Look, the steer box comes down. Huh? Steer box, steer jet. Pretty neat. Right so the machine works. Have to go say hi. Well, International Golden Jubilee. Some fire truck. This is Golden Jubilee. International's first attempt at a fleet side bed. Three on the column. This is cool, an Alice Chalmers dealership truck. With an Alice Chalmers on it. Red mule as opposed to the blue mule. 
fire department. Yeah, I might, might have passed this thing on the way up here. This has been such a cool experience checking out the ATHS show. My feet are sore, hot, hungry, and tired. And uh, I think we're probably going to head out. Camera's acting up too. I'm going to try to get some more footage on the way out, but we'll see. If not, thanks for watching.